Thing. You're going to be having a PGG Enigma, by the way. The legend himself. Picking up the Enigma. So, aggro try versus... We'll have to see. We'll have to see how Dream Team react to this. And I'm surprised ZXZ... Oh, never mind. ZXZ's just coming with the team. Weck is a little bit farther behind, but... They probably just want to be able to establish some dominance in their jungle. Make sure that nothing is blocked out. But also see what the what the situation is going to be in this bottom lane because I do not think they should run, try and run the Shattered Demon Marana with the Enigma in the jungle. Now, Shattered Demon Marana is a very successful dual lane because it's the right mix of both offensive battle. and defensive abilities. Marana has an escape mechanism and she's in real big trouble. You always have a disruption to be able to save her a, a couple of seconds. So it can be run very defensive and then just wait for that one pickoff. My main concern would be the Enigma is going to be shut down if you try and run him in his own jungle because the aggro try is having a hard time getting kills up against the Shadow Demon uh, Marana combo. They're going to rotate heavily into the jungle and I think the Enigma is going to have a super hard time in that regard. Invisibility. But it looks like they're going to go for it anyway. PGG is going to start out by denying one creep in the middle lane before heading back and farming up these camps. No um, no blocks just yet. We do have finally one ward being placed by the Shatter Demon, which is going to block out this pull camp. Um, so there's going to be no double pull available, but I, I think they should have put more effort into establishing wards to block out this hard camp right here. Because Enigma, if necessary, can just bounce between these two camps and just still get a, a good amount of farm. So I think that was a slight mistake by Sick Arrow, but at the same time, Marana's should be shut down pretty heavily here when it comes to CS, even if they can't get the kill. Uh, they'll just be able to harass her out of lane and make sure she doesn't come forward too much. Clockwork versus the Faceless Void is not a bad matchup one way or the other. Faceless Void is tanky enough to be able to deal with the Clockwork. At the same time, Clockwork has the opportunity to harass the Faceless Void by quite a bit. There goes your first uh, disruption arrow combination onto No Fear. Brings them down to about half health, but obviously against this aggro try, there's no way they're going to be able to actually get a kill early on. That was just to get a little harassment in against the enemy supports and, and make sure that they don't feel safe just running forward and constantly harassing like that. Mitra C, yep, there it is, Viper. Trying to zone out ZXE very early on. ZXE taking a large amount of damage from these right clicks again. Thunderstock, well, he didn't actually go for the Corrosive Skin. I'm surprised he didn't go for that at level 2, considering the fact that he's dealing with a Venomancer, who you know is going to be trying to lay down some right clicks as much as possible. But, not but sure enough, still picks up the 1-1-1. One, one, one. You can already see ZXC's plan, though. By level 3, he's already spammed out a whole bunch of Plague Wards. And that is going to be his mainstay. And th this is the best way to run up against Viper. I would say the best heroes to go up against a Viper or Razor or any heroes that have spamming abilities. So whether that's like Death Prophet and you just Crypt Swarm the wave every single time it comes close, or in this case, Venomancer who just spams out wards everywhere, and the Viper is not going to be able to go forward into those wards to harass and chase down the Venomancer. Illusions will certainly help, though, to be able to zone him out. I think, feel overall, though, Dream Team are getting the better side of this um, of this laning phase solely because of the fact that PGG is free farming the jungle. And that gives me a lot of concern. I feel like this sick arrow aggro try could have been run a lot better if they just blocked out the wards, but it also seems like they're not doing too great a job of finding any kills against this dual lane. Again, it's tough, but... Actually, I say that. I was looking at the wrong CS. Scandal has only had one CS, so they're, they're doing fine, actually. They're picking up a full amount of experience, but... Our Zeke, he's doing something cheeky, but it's not going to be that strong. Um, he is just trying to soak up some of the experience the Enigma is farming in the jungle, but this is something that... 
is not going to be a game-winning situation at all. Like, the, the Enigma is still going to be picking up a lot of farm. That's still going to be a very fast mech for this Enigma. And that concerns me because I felt like the Viper was going to be the biggest advantage for Sick Arrow going into the mid-game. Scandal making a quick leap away as the Tree Protector reveals his rotation into the lane once again. 20 and 9 on the Wind Ranger, topping out the board, but at the same time, both Enigma and Clockwork are not far behind with 18 and 2 and 16 and 5. And, uh, I'm happy to see Afterlife is doing so well in CS. I think a lot of Clockworks would focus overly on trying to harass another melee hero like Faceless Void, but I, I just simply don't think it's worth the, the trade off here. Faces Void is a very dangerous right clicker. I, I think you should just do what he's doing right now, which is burn him out with cogs, force him away from some CS, and just focus on getting your level six as soon as possible and start making that first rotation. As soon as he hits level six, he should be going to this bottom lane and threatening the aggro try because they're all massively under leveled due to the fact they're all sharing the same amount of experience here. So they're all going to be level four by the time you're level six. You can see Afterlife, he went for quite the uh, melee-focused build here, which is the maxed-out battery assault, which gives you a lot more kill potential, but also the second level in cogs as well, which you normally... if it, Kill potential comes from battery assault, I feel, most heavily. But you usually go for a 3-1-1 three, three, one, one build. The only time you level up cogs and extra level, I think, is if you're going up against melees and you really want to burn away their mana as much as possible. Sima. He's doing the, the smartest thing he can, though, is which is fighting, face, uh, fighting the clockwork underneath the creep wave. So he makes sure the battery assault is going to be... A lot of the damage is going to be soaked up by the, uh, by the creep wave. And he just turns and right clicks. And with a max out time block, he out DPSs the clockwork. As long as the battery assault is not. Sima has to be careful here. If Afterlife is actually able to successfully force him away, he still has a hook shot as well to be able to lay down. But every single time, Sima just hugs the creeps and is safe because of it. Arrow's going to come out. Nice dodge there from RZQQ. Gets himself away. They're actually going to try and go for the kill here. Scandal silenced up, and they can try first about Nice dodge, and now the black hole on three heroes. RZ is going to go down. The Starlight is going to go over the top as well. As No Fear is going to be the second death, presumably, as they Shadow Poison. Yep, there goes double kill for Wei. That was a completely, and again, it makes the big difference. If you do not shut down the Enigma by warding out his camps, Enigma picking up level six so damn quickly there, it just totally took Sick Arrow by surprise, getting caught like that. The very first black hole of the game turns out to be a three-man black hole. That just simply should not happen. Afterlife failing his first rotation, he tried to go for a kill in the mid lane up against a Viper, but missed the hook shot there. These supports, uh, I, I honestly don't have a plan for them anymore, because it's obvious the aggro try has failed, but should they be rotating around and maybe babysitting faces necessarily leave it, need it? The Viper certainly doesn't, going one-on-one -on -one up against a Venomancer, it's... For him, this is just a farming lane and nothing else. So the, the supports attack. are really lacking direction. They have no obvious lanes that they should be sitting in. So they continue to sit with the aggro tribe, but that just simply will continue to fail. Afterlife, it starts going on. Seam of the Slayer does not have a hook shot just yet. The teleporting is not going to be in time. And Afterlife does get his first kill. Hook shot or no? Missed the hook shot in the middle lane. Doesn't matter. Gets the kill in the faceless void. That's going to be great for him. A huge amount of experience he just picked up. You can see he's going straight for like a lot of early strength. The early power treads helps him out a lot up against the um, the Faces Void matchup. Disruption arrow coming out. Scandal whipping that one as Nubik Jukes farther down. And he's able to get himself away. Here comes the first support rotation though. 
They're going to try and catch out the Venom Master. They get the slow. Thundershot trying to get close enough. Slowed down by the wards, but he will eventually get in range of the Viper Strike. The question is, do they really want to go for the dive here? They're going to turn on to PGG, and with a nice Shackle Shot, will ensure the kill. RZ getting low, though. He's going to go down due to the tower. Meanwhile, Absolute has come in from behind. Goes on no fear, but it's low. And now he's going to go into Thundershock as well. Gets a double kill off of that one. And even Nubik is having a hard time. Turns around, power shots on the Venom Answer, while also getting out of range of Afterlife. He should be fine from here. It looks like Afterlife actually turning around here. This is not a good play by him. The Marana ultimate going out. The Invids will be able to save him just in time. And Nubik gets himself away. One last right click would have ended the life of Afterlife there, but... No surprise though, Dream Team making a lot of early Dyer's rotations like that. Under attack. Ready to respond when six, Sick Arrow with both the Skywrath Mage as well as the Train Protector go into the mid lane. Dream Team has always been a very aggressive team. Just by nature, you, you can put them on the same pedestal as the, um, the old Virtus Pro, Power Rangers, Empire even. I think Empire is the uh, least uh, aggressive CIS team. And yet they're still very, very aggressive going into the mid game. Um, it's just, I think they, they curb some of their laning phase aggression. Uh, and I think that actually paid out bigger dividends than the classic 15 minute go, go, fight, fight, fight that the CIS uh, scene is known for. Another slow is gonna go on to Scandal. They're gonna try and track him down here. The Silence is gonna go out. They need a Shackle Shot. Unfortunately, there's no obvious target, so instead they go on to Weck. Beautiful Shackle Shot there. But still, good disruption will be able to dodge the Power Shot. PGG trying to get in close range for that Black Hole is not going to be getting close enough. Afterlife silenced up to make sure there's no extra pursuit. And Sick Arrow, while they don't get the kill on Marana, I think they're lucky enough to be alive at this point in time. RZQ, Afterlife, lands the hookshot, it's going to be going for the kill. RZ has no way to be able to defend himself against this one. Maybe Viper can get a counter kill, though, as they start getting up the slows. Wet comes in with the disruption, but Afterlife is still slowed down so much that Thundershock, he's not even going to be able to get in range. He still has brown boots. If he had upgraded boots, there's a chance he could catch up with the Clockwork and get an additional right click in, but as it stands, Another missed kill opportunity for Sick Arrow. 7 to 2, 10 and a half minutes in. And here comes Seaman Slayer. He's going to go for ZXC. That should be a free pickoff. No rotations are coming in from the Dream I Team squad. And even a lucky Everyone. little bash there at the last second. I think Venomancer was. Oh, never mind. I was going to say Venomancer might have thought about popping the Poison Nova there in an attempt to kill Thundershock, but. Between the fact that he only has level 1 Venomous Gale and no levels in his ultimate. Obviously, that's, uh, that was not Radiant's the thought process. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. I do think this is the correct skill build for the Venomancer, though. Uh, maxing out your poison sting. Obviously, the wards is the whole reason they picked up the Venomancer and his ability to lane against the Viper successfully. You have no right. But already, they've been put on the defensive here. Sick arrow looking. I'm not sure why they're trying to force a fight here without a Chronosphere. Dyer's I mean, I think I harped on this pretty much decided. constantly after the draft and we had that long pause. Faces Void is their their key to winning team fights. And if you don't have a Chronosphere, I don't think you should be trying to force it. They do have the mech advantage for about a minute, maybe two minutes longer over PGG's Enigma, um, who is going to be getting the mech in just another 450 gold. But for the time being, I, I think this is why they're fighting. They recognize they have the mech advantage, and they're going to five man according. It's a little risky without the Chronosphere, but if they can maybe get a tower lead over... Uh, over Dream Team by doing this. The problem is they're pushing into Venomancer Wards. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And this is this is where wards are their absolute strongest. They're super tanky at sitting at 450 health. Dyer's they bottom have tower maxed is under out attack. Uh, poison sting. So they're actually doing a lot of damage for every hit they hit on a hero. It's just not feasible to be able to take those towers. 
So instead, Sick Arrow, we're going to go right back to farming. Mask of Madness is going to be up soon for Scene of the Slayer. This gives Faceless Void solo kill potential. You need that massive upgrade to attack speed um, for the Faceless Void to be a threat by itself. Before then, it's Chronosphere is really just set up for other heroes. If you get really lucky with your time locks, because you're only going to get three, maybe four hits within one Chronosphere, if you get really lucky with time locks, you might be able to get a solo kill, but it's pretty unli unlikely. There's the mech, PGG. They may be looking to try and get a gank here on this Faces Void. Be a good time to do it as well. If they can actually gank him before he picks up level 11, Every ultimate upgrade makes a big difference for the Faces Void because he comes, becomes more and more active as time goes on. And, and he picks up his level 2 and level 3 ultimates because then it lowers the cooldown rather dramatically. And uh, especially if you go for an Aghanim's build. I don't anticipate him to be going for an Aghanim's build this time around though. I think just early damage is his best bet. Uh, Mask of Madness into a Maelstrom. Turn that into a BKB, then go Mjolnir after that. Um, I think that would probably be the most standard build at this point in time. The Mjolnir uh, is going to have some pretty big benefits, I think, because you have both a Train Protector. If you don't put it on yourself, you have a Train Protector as well as a Viper, who are both pretty tanky frontline heroes who could benefit from having that active static charge on him. So I, I do believe he should be going for the, the Mjolnir build this game, but we'll see how he chooses to go for it. Dream Team trying some pushing of their own, but as as difficult as it is pushing into wards, it can be just as difficult pushing into power shots sometimes. Very early high levels of power shot. It draws the creep aggro off of the tower. It does a good amount of damage and harassment to everybody trying to push. But if they can just get a commitment here, if Shadow Demon can somehow get in range of a disruption and they can get an arrow kill, that'll be a free tower. Arrow comes out, Nubik forced away, and there goes the tower. The attempt at a deny doesn't actually happen. Uh, top lane, though. They're going to go for Afterlife. Chronosphere laid down. Mask of Madness. Where's the Mask of Madness being popped? Zima doesn't even try for it there. He would have laid down so much more damage if he used the mask, but he didn't even go for it. I'm not sure if he used the Mask of Madness if it would have gotten him the kill. Uh, I think it's unlikely just because how tanky the clockwork is. Arrow comes out, Nubik once again sneaking past that one. Black Hole's gonna be laid down though, and Scandal with the Star Storm will be able to finish off Nubik, but that was a Black Hole for one hero kill. Fortunately though, they will be able to get a lot of damage, potentially even take this tier two, while at the same time, they're taking the tier one at the top lane as well. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's structures are fortified. They are, I think that's the best thing you can do at this point in time. If you don't have Chrono Sphere, don't try and defend your towers. And instead, they're going to trade. It's a two for one. But at the same time, I think it's the best thing you can do in this situation. Ideally, they would have been able to push middle and defend bottom, that bottom tier two at the same time. But with Nubik being caught out by the black hole, that just wasn't an option. Taking a look at the net worth, Venomancer is leading the board right now due to the fact he went for a hand of Midas, is now picked up a along with it. Whoa, looks like we had a little bit of lag. No, uh, no, Afterlife is going to be going for the Yule Scepter, and yes, ZXE did go for the four style. That makes sense up against uh, heroes like the Skywrath Mage and Viper. Positioning is very key against them. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So that does make a lot of sense. Venomancer is also very useful in offensive position with mobility items. The, the farther he can push himself into a team fight and get off a good Poison Nova early on, um, the stronger he is as sort of a just ult and die hero. He, he's very much a, a suicide bomber. He's, even as a core, he can be a suicide bomber. No surprise, Thundershock is going to be going for an Aghanim Scepter after he's picked up the mech. Uh, the Yule Scepter is pretty curious, though. Um, so Yule Scepter is a really good defense mechanism against the Faces Void and Skywrath Mage, and potentially even the Viper if he dodges the ultimate, the Viper Strike. So if you're fast enough with your Yule Scepter usage, you can defend yourself 
against the Faces Void Ultimate or the Viper Ultimate, uh, especially the Skywrath Mage. And I think the Skywrath Mage is really the biggest reason he went for the Yule Scepter here is because when he jumps on somebody and hook shots and then power cogs, he locks the enemy hero inside of the cogs with him, but he also leaves himself massively exposed to a Skywrath Mage Ultimate. I mean, it's, it's the easiest Mystic Flare of your life at that point in time. So now most Clockworks would be going for a Blademan in order to combat that. But Clockwork is apparently trying to increase his survivability. Rock instead of trying to trade hit for hit against the Skywrath Mage, he's instead going to be going for the Yule Scepter, which is going to give him the opportunity to put himself in a tornado and dodge all of that potential damage. Seam of the Slayer is going to be going for the Maelstrom right now. We'll see if he deviates from the Maelstrom into a BKB. Um, he may not go for it just because of the fact, he may go straight for the damage of a Mjolnir uh, because of the fact you have a lot of abilities that will go through the BKB. I would still go for the BKB because of the Venomancer and his ultimate, but I can understand if he doesn't because he has Black Hole, Purge, as well as Hookshot, which are all gonna go through that BKB. PGG. Oh, there goes the Force Staff and a Disruption, dodging a huge amount of damage there. Power Shot comes out, but the mech will be able to keep him alive. Now Yubi gets in some trouble. ZXD pops his ultimate as he forces back both Thundershock. Afterlife, he's going to start getting aggressive, using that Yule Scepter to set up a kill onto no fear, but it's going to cost him his life in the process. As Steven Slayer comes in, also throws in a good Chronosphere that locks in Weg. But oh, there goes the Black Hole. Beautiful one that's going to catch out too. Thundershock in the back is still going on PGG and will successfully get that kill, but Weg with three stacks of poison finishes off the face's void and now if they can get away from this viper that will be a damn decent fight for dream team they actually go back in with the disruption they're gonna go for this kill somehow rz not able to help out the viper in any way a couple of uh stacks a little bit extra poison Oh, no, the one chargers Dyer's will keep him alive. They do force the viper back attack. though and that's going to mean a tier Dyer's one tower going down in the mid lane The power of the Venom Master, man. Max out. Like, I don't, I don't care. Like, I know everyone loves wards, and because you love wards, you also love Poison Sting. But I actually feel that Venomous Gale is, is massively underrated. So when you get just massively experience boosted, like this Venom Master is, uh, and you're able to get Venomous Gale maxed out by 20 and a half minutes, like, being level 14 by 20 minutes is... Impressive, to say the least. So I think this Venomous, Venomous Gale is going to make a big impact in a lot of these team fights now. It gives him much more kill potential with his Poison Nova. If he's able to finish up an Aghanims in the next five minutes, I'm not sure what Sick Arrow can do about that. And, and I think it also forces Seam of the Slayer to be going for a BKB as his next item. I don't think he can go full Mjolnir damage now. Good amount of survivability on this uh, Venomancer as well because of that. PGG, as we saw in that last team fight, he revealed his uh, most recent pickup, which was that Blink Dagger that allowed him to get the two-man black hole. Shadow Demon, uh, he's going to be grabbing himself a four staff as well, and he's been doing an excellent job with these Shadow Poison stacks. Sick Arrow have not been trying to dodge the poison, the shadow poison at all. And they've been, like, it's all reason Seam the Slayer went down there is he had three stacks of poison and he didn't successfully backtrack the uh, activation of it. Whoa! Seema! Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Play there. Seema with a Chronosphere. Marana, I mean, that was quick reaction by Marana leaping away, but still, that should, Radiant's that should just not happen to Seema the Slayer. Fortunately, it, was, it is a level 2 ultimate, so it's going to be back up in just 80 seconds, but... Missed opportunity. That could have ensured them a tier 2 tower here, or at least a trade. We already see ZXE is going to start Dyer's threatening the base, but... Sick arrow, if they'd been Radiant's able to get off a pickoff, I think they could have attack. forced down this tier 2. As it stands, though, Radiant I think that Dream Team are either are going to get Dyer's a better trade out of this, or they're attack. going to force a fight into fighting. 
here comes ZXZ. Already far forward. He can force staff himself forward. He snagged Nubik there with the slow. Now the hook shot. Whoa! Whiff in that one. ZXZ is also going to be able to get out the ultimate and the black hole. Poor man, but he nearly stopped by the silence. Good disruption there from the Shattered Demon and a better shackle shot. As now Team of the Slayer comes back in. What you would give for a chrono right there. No fear goes down as well. Three heroes out. Thunder Shock going to be chased away as well. And only one surviving hero on the side of Sick Arrow. Actually, he just got a kill on PGG there. That poison is going to be able to ensure him the kill. So, a two for four exchange. If only, if only that voice, Faceless Void, had not whiffed his chrono earlier and had either picked off the Marana or still had his chrono because that would have been a five man chrono. That was a beautiful black hole, by the way. Well done by PGG. Unfortunately, he just wasn't able to snag the Skywrath Mage, who, was, who did a good job with his positioning. With the enemy, when his team started retreating, he made sure he was ahead of the pack and wasn't with the rest of them. And he turned around very quickly and got that silence off. Well done by him, but still. That could have been such an amazing fight for Sick Arrow. And, and yet, between the, uh, between the lack of Chrono and everything else, no chance for Sick Arrow. 16 to 7, 24 minutes in. We have over 10,000 gold lead for Dream Team, 12,000 experience as well. And I think we're about to see another pickoff. Our Zeke. Sorry, buddy. That counter ward may reveal a clockwork, but it's way too late for you. Throws out the Leech Seed as well. Well, he can't actually pop the Leech Seed yet. There goes the ultimate. And he's going to turn on Afterlife here, but if they're not careful, they're going to be caught. Arrow comes in. Oh, it snags RZ. Good force snap off the cliff, though. Well done by uh, Nubik. He actually successfully got RZ out of what should have been a simple pickoff for Dream Team. You notice Nubik is also beginning to hit pretty hard again. If they get the good Chronosphere, that is going to allow the Focus Fire to come into play. Four and a half seconds of free. Oh, there goes Chronosphere Ultimate. Going on PGD right away. Skyrim Mage over the top with his ultimate. ZXZ is going to get popped, but not before he gets off his ultimate. And that's going to cost Sick Arrow dearly. They try and fight back. Nubik pops a wind run, starts going on Wet, but it's not going to be enough damage as he gets first and down. Now, Thunder Shots is going to get picked off as well. That's a life plans his hook. Four heroes go down once again. This time, only one falls on the side of Dream Team. If, if they'd been able to pop the Venomancer before the ultimate, it could have been a slightly different fight, but I think Sick Arrow just way too far behind. And now Dream Team, we said they're on a timer, but they are so far ahead at this point. If they can actually secure a mid rax I don't think Sick Arrow can come back. They do still have the late game advantage, but with the way Dream Team are playing and the way I know these guys, and I know they're just not going to give Sick Arrow any room to breathe, I think they're just going to back up and force down a second lane of Rax. And Sick Arrow, unless they land just the most massive Chronosphere of this Faceless Void's life, I don't think they have a shot at being able to defend. But they're certainly going to, f to try. I mean, they have the late game advantage, so you're never going to give up off of just a tier three going down. In fact, I'm surprised there wasn't enough physical damage from Dream Team to be able to take at least a range racks there. But suppose they didn't have the Enigma. Speaking of the Enigma, PGG is currently sitting on 3,700 gold right now. And that means we're going to have a BKB for him in just about 30 seconds time, which is going to be awesome. Because then, you only have to worry about Chronosphere and Overgrowth. Those are the two abilities that can stop the black hole. Presumably, you won't have to worry about the Chronosphere because you should always be trying to catch Faces Void in the black hole. So the, the questionable one is the Train Protector and how good our Zeke's positioning is. Because the most dangerous thing about this is the Overgrowth. He needs to be close enough for, to his team that he can respond pretty quickly to popping his overgrowth and stopping that black hole, but also not hugging them too close that he gets caught in it as well. It's a very tricky game of positioning. And our Zeke throw down the smiley face as he just popped the smoke within uh, ward range there. 
Seeing the Slayer, Arrow actually snagged the Wind Ranger in the background. They're still going to be going for Wack. Oh, nice, Yule Scepter usage. Yeah. And the Black Hole catching in three. Nubik even forced out himself into it at the same time. Overgrowth goes off. Seeing the Slayer in the background, he's going to fall as he gets burned out of all of his mana. And it's going to be a white Arrow lands. Double kill for ZXZ, double for Scandal. There it is. Before Rax even falls, Sick Arrow will call the GG. And Dream Team will move on to the IAD of the European Qualify. So very well done by them. Dream Team 168, looking in pretty good form. They've had some slight roster changes. Uh, Weck is a newer name that I haven't seen. Um, Scandal and CXC obviously joining or uh, joining.